Hello, and welcome to another video on laboratory techniques produced by the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill iGEM Team 2015. Today, we're going to be talking about gel electrophoresis and how to properly conduct an experiment using this technique. Gel electrophoresis is one of the most widely used methods for separating macromolecules by size and is used by scientists today in the fields of clinical chemistry, biochemistry, and molecular biology, just to name a few. Because of the pervasiveness of this technique and its importance to so many different fields, knowing how to make and run a gel is an invaluable skill for any researcher to know. Gel electrophoresis relies on the fact that smaller molecules will migrate more readily through the pores of a gel and that many molecules and constructs are either negatively or positively charged. Utilizing these properties, it's possible to separate constructs by inserting them into a gelatinous substance and subjecting the system to an electrical current. Most modern gels are composed of agarose, a polysaccharide polymer extracted from seaweed. Not only is agarose readily available, it also has a high strength at low concentrations, making it ideal for use with small concentrations of material. Today, you'll learn how to create an agarose gel, load it with DNA, and run it. Different concentrations of agarose in a gel will affect the speed at which substances will transverse the gel. For this video, we'll be making a 1x gel. First, measure out 1 gram of agarose using a calibrated scale. In addition to agarose, we'll be using 100 milliliters 1x TAE buffer as a solvent. TAE contains a mixture of tris base, acetic acid, and EDTA. Together, these compounds allow electrical conduction and prevent ions from interacting with DNA samples. Other buffers, such as TBE, can be used as well depending on the application. Combine 1 gram of agarose with 100 milliliters of 1x TAE in a glass beaker. Cover the beaker with a paper towel to prevent boil over. Place it within the microwave oven and heat on high for around 20 seconds. Heating times often vary widely, depending on the age and efficiency of the microwave. Ensure that all the agarose has dissolved into the TAE buffer before continuing. You can hold the beaker up to the light and swirl the solution to ensure that all the agarose has dissolved. If any flakes or particles of agarose remain, reheat the solution. Now we'll add one microgram of ethidium bromide to the agarose solution. Ethidium bromide inserts itself between DNA bases and fluoresces orange when exposed to ultraviolet light. Please be warned, Ethidium bromide is carcinogenic, and proper precautions must be taken to prevent exposure. All ethidium bromide waste must be stored in a separate marked container and disposed of properly. This includes all pipette tips used with ethidium bromide and gels. Pour the solution into a mold. This particular mold fits within the electrophoresis chamber. Other molds may be independent of the chamber and require balancing adjustments. Place a well mold into the gel solution. It's important to always clean this mold between uses as contamination may be visible when imaging the gel. Using a clean pipette tip, carefully push bubbles within the solution towards the mold walls. This removes the bubbles and ensures that the gel will be solid throughout. Be careful not to breathe any of the fumes coming from the agarose gel, as some ethidium bromide may have been vaporized. Once the gel forms, carefully remove the well mold. Here, we remove the mold with the gel and place it in its proper orientation. Fill the chamber with 1x TAE. The TAE will act as an electrolyte source and allow electrical conduction. Begin loading the gel. Molecular weight size markers contain standards of incrementally increasing molecular weight and can be used to approximate the size of different samples. Here we are adding a 1 kilobase and 100 base pair DNA ladder. Next, load the rest of the samples in the wells, making sure to write down which well contains which sample. When loading a gel, it's important to hold the pipette as vertically as possible and carefully deposit each sample within a well. 
Gel loading dyes can be added to samples and used to visually track samples in the gel and increase the density of sample solutions, making it easier to deposit samples within wells. Here, a blue loading die is used. Connect the electrophoresis chamber to a power source. Because DNA is negatively charged, it will migrate towards areas of positive charge. Place the negative cathode above the gel wells and the positive anode below the wells, at the other end of the gel. Turn on the power source and allow the gel to run. This particular gel was ran at 120 volts for one hour. Lower voltages will slow down the diffusion of samples. Longer periods of time will extend the distance covered by those same samples. You can ensure that the chamber is conducting electricity by checking for the presence of bubbles around the cathode and the anode. Before imaging the gel, clean the surface of the ultraviolet emitter with an ethanol solution. This will ensure a cleaner image. Carefully remove the power source from the chamber and ensure that it is no longer outputting electricity. Carefully remove the gel with its mold. Slide the gel onto the ultraviolet emitter. The gel can be moved around on the emitter to eliminate bubbles formed between the gel and the emitter surface. Cover the emitter and turn it on. Only view the gel through screens designed to block UV light. Ultraviolet radiation can cause burns to the skin and cornea of the eye. Please use precaution. Now the gel can be imaged and analyzed. Now that you know how to make and run an agarose gel, you're one step closer to mastering the laboratory. Go forth and discover.